Let me tell you guys a little story. The other day, a company called Venom Motorsports reached out to me via email and said, hey, we like your channel, we wanna work with you, let's send you a free motorcycle so you can check out. And I said, well, Venom Motorsports, I've never really heard anything about these guys before. So I looked them up, looked like some cheapo Chinese bike type of thing. I was like, hey man, sure, send me the bike, let's have some fun with it. But they sent me the contract and they wanted a bunch of dedicated videos and they wanted to make sure that I said nothing negative about the bike. And I just don't really roll like that. So I ended up getting it anyways. Cause I don't want anybody telling me what I can and can't say about a motorcycle. I like having my autonomy here on the channel. So here it is in a giant box over here that says boom on the side of it, but I'm pretty sure with the email that I got, I ordered a 2022 Venom Superbike 250cc motorcycle. So, Superbike, huh? We are interested to see if that is the case because Venom Motorsports wanted to make sure I didn't say anything negative about this bike, but I'm gonna say exactly whatever the hell I want. Let's unbox this thing and let's check out the Venom Superbike. Okay, looks like there's a lot of staples. So, I'm just gonna try to cut open this part. Oh, dual disc brakes, folks. That's how you know it's a super bike. So they have an option where you can actually get this thing um, delivered assembled, but I thought it'd be more fun to, to actually PDI it myself <laughs> as if I'm an actual dealership. Um, the title is here. Some of the other paperwork is here. Um, something tells me that I'm probably going to treat this kind of like the Jixxer 250 and I won't really care about the title registration or anything else. Um, it's kind of a wretched little motorcycle and doesn't really matter but we will grab the documents just, just in case I somehow do want to sell this motorcycle. Although I'm pretty sure it's going to end in a horrible, horrible fate like the uh, Jixxer 250. Time to grab some tools. Now I will say if you're beginner riders out there and you're looking at getting something like this as your first bike, uh, I'm not sure if it's that wise of an idea because this looks like a lot of prep work for a first timer. Um, you should just buy a bike that's already built in my opinion. Also, the packaging's pretty decent. I mean, it's got this nice little cloth over it to protect the paint and stuff. So some level of thought went into this. It doesn't look completely haphazard. So again, this was listed as a super bike. So my expectations are pretty high. I'm not gonna lie. Couple bolts, you get two keys that have no branding on them. Um, <laughs> it's just a totally, totally nondescript key. Look at that. Just motorcycle key. Uh, that's all you get. Um, this looks pretty shoddy right here. I'm not gonna lie, the triples right here, that does not look good. Um, looks like they just drilled right into there. Cause it looks like the clip-ons are gonna attach directly under there. So I guess that makes it easier, but doesn't make it look very good. If I can just take a moment, our tactical X-Acto blade <laughs> with the mag release that I bought as a meme for the Discord boys. That clutch, high beam, low beam, already attached. That makes it pretty easy. All you got to do is just put that on there. Pretty simple. With these clip-ons dangling, it's kind of reminding me of my my crappy uh, <laughs> race bike over there that just has the parts all dangling off of it. Okay, brake hose is already attached. This is gonna be really easy, honestly. I think I just have to connect the battery and attach the fuel line and that's about it. All right, boys, face reveal. Why does it, it looks, it looks like a Ninja 300. Is this a Ninja 300 fairing? What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Hold on a sec. Wait a minute. Come here, look, look at this. This is a Ninja 300 dash. I'm, I'm almost positive. I'm about to pull this up on my phone. That's the same, that is the same damn thing. Look at that. Okay, battery's not connected. May not be a battery on this bike. I don't know yet, we'll have to see, but that is the same as that. Um, I don't know why. Maybe they bought surplus off of Kawasaki because the rest of it sure as hell ain't a Ninja 300. I'll tell you that right now. I may have scratched that when I opened it, but that's okay. Because this, this thing's here for a good time, not for a long time, folks. I'll tell you that right now. This does definitely not have a battery in it. I don't know what's in there, but it's not a battery. I hope there is a battery in this thing. I did not want to go and buy a battery today. I've had so many battery issues with my H2 that I'm not in the mood for that. BD255, that's what it says on the tail right there with the sticker that looks like you could peel it off pretty easily. Come on, battery. Yes, it's just not connected, thank God. 
Oh my God, this thing is a cheap piece of crap. <laughs> Don't look too close, folks. There ain't nothing going on here. This is an, oh my God. <laughs> We're gonna get these fairings off and take a look at this. This is ridiculous. Single wire for the throttle, but housing for two? Man, that's jank. Look at this, folks. This is fine if you have a single throttle wire. I've, I've seen that set up before, but it's jank to have the housing to have two and you don't have the return cable as well. That is super, super strange. Um, but what else is new with this bike at this point? An agricultural style 250 that's not meant to be in something like this. You can tell it's cheap because look how much space there is in, in the back. There's nothing in here. I mean, it's 3,000 bucks because all you're getting is this crappy little 250 inside of it. Gear shift is prohibited unless accelerator is loosed. What? Look at this. Gear shift is prohibited unless accelerator is loosed. Loosed. What does that mean? Is the, is the throttle cable stuck or something? And until you do that, it's... Hold up. No, that's open. What the f is it? <laughs> Until it's loosed, baby. What? This is a worthy successor to the Jixxer 250. This, we're, we're truly, we're going deeper this year, boys. 2021 is the year of the Hobgoblin, the Jixxer 250. We're going way deeper on this one. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting comparing this to see if it, if it's any good as a motorcycle. You know, this rev counter, I just thought of it, is, is probably pretty ambitious. Uh, it's saying 12 and a half, 13,000 RPM. I bet if you rev this thing to 13,000, it'll literally blow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Good God. The pinnacle of performance. The Boss BD255 Superbike. This looks, oh, mirrors. That's nice, you will need those. <laughs> going to attach to the, the front of the bike. Probably Ninja 300 mirrors um, or something similar. They're very lightweight. And what's interesting is in the world of motorcycling, lightweight is usually better. But in this case, you can just tell it's really cheap. Look, look, look closely on here. Read the owner's manual carefully before riding. Bro, this says typos on the warning labels. How safe do you think this thing is? The Dwoner's manual carefully before... Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> do you trust this thing with your life? I don't. So I had to take the fairings off this bike and, and kind of see what's going on. Uh, so it appears to be a simple kind of tubular steel construction cradle frame uh, motorcycle. The welds are not what I would call the cleanest. Um, you can see here there's some spattering and some weirdness in the welds. Um, and really guys, you wanna make sure the welds are good because look, it's not like anyone's gonna be jumping this thing, but I've seen even Royal Enfield Himalayans get split in half with some aggressive riding. So not the best looking welds. Uh, this is a weird setup here too. But looking at the engine, you can see it's an air-cooled 250cc four-stroke motor. Um, the most utilitarian, simple little engine you could possibly get. Uh, you can tell it's very simple because there's literally nothing going on, right? There's no radiator. There is no kind of advanced uh, sensors. If you look at something like a KTM RC390, which is a 373cc single cylinder, much more advanced, much more tightly uh, packaged as well. That's how you can tell a motorcycle engine is pretty bare bones because it's kind of like they don't really care about the packaging the size of it because you can see they can fit anything that they wanted to in here. Now, the fairings did come from a Ninja 300 and the dash came from a Ninja 300 because as I mentioned, there's no way that this thing's gonna redline at 13,000 RPM indicated on the dash. We're gonna see when we ride it if they kind of fudge the numbers a little bit and they make the tack go all the way to the red line, but I don't think it's gonna rev that hard. Um, the fuel line was connected, which is great. That's something I wanted to double check just in case it wasn't actually hooked up, but it appears that everything is hooked up. So we're clear to uh, attach the gas tank back on, connect the battery, put the fairings back on, put the windshield, put the mirrors on, and uh, start this thing up. 
started right up. That was, I did not expect that. <laughs> Fuel pump primed and it's good to go. Okay, that's cool, but we're gonna finish putting everything on it and then I'm gonna go take it out for a ride and uh, see what it does. This thing feels like garbage. <laughs> what does a front end feel like that? Oh boy, oh boy, the front end feels not safe. I'm not gonna lie. This this bike does not feel safe. <laughs> Straight out of the crate. This does not feel... The front end is wandering, dude. Okay, guys, I am not, I am not doing this to this bike. It's, it's like tracking. What the heck is going on? So I tried to take this thing out for its first ride and the front end felt horrible. Uh, I got a lot of wandering and slow speeds is really awkward. And I was like, what is going on? So I got the bike up on a rear stand and a front stand. I'm just, I was just checking the basics, trying to see if the axles were torqued, trying to see if the rear wheel is aligned. I've already found some issues. The chain is tight as a drum. I didn't remember to check that before I left, which I should have because it's a Chinese bike. But more importantly, the front end here, if you guys can see, this should spin freely. The brake is dragging in the front. So I'm gonna pop off these calipers, dual disc calipers, which is very ambitious on this thing, and just see if I can create some clearance and see if I can get this to spin more freely because this is definitely dragging and causing the issues that we're having for sure. So stick around. All right guys, so I removed the twin disc calipers here from the bike and now the front end rolls freely. Imagine that. Um, it's because this had hardly any tolerance for the brake disc and this is actually a problem I've ran into on a bicycle before. I did not imagine you'd run into this on a brand new motorcycle. So what I've done is I've kind of opened it up a little bit with a flat head and I'm hoping that that's going to provide us enough room for this to flow freely. I'm going to test it with the brakes here and if it gets stuck again I might have to put some WD or some grease or something and uh, see how this goes. But that's a really bad sign. Like imagine if I wasn't a reasonably experienced motorcyclist and I bought this and I just go and take it for a ride and I don't understand why it's doing this. Uh, really unsafe. So I'm gonna futz around with this a little bit and I'll tell you guys if it's fixed the issue. So it's dragging a little bit still, but that's obviously better. Before it was like, shh, shh, but now it's, now it's rolling and you can see. So should be good to go. I'm gonna go take it out for another ride and hopefully this time it doesn't do that crazy thing. Super unsafe. You cannot ship a motorcycle like this to people, especially beginner riders who don't know what they're doing. What the hell? So obviously one of the most important things on a motorcycle is the chain. That's the thing that's taking the power from the engine to the rear wheel. And you need to make sure the chain slack is correct. A chain that's too loose runs the risk of the chain flying off the sprocket, but honestly, a chain that's too tight is worse because it adds way more wear and tear to the chain and the engine and the drivetrain and just everything else than it needs to. As you can tell, this motorcycle is drum tight. This is like a guitar string. You need to see at least, you know, 10 to 15 millimeters of travel here. And we, we have like five, you know? Uh, I think on the KTM RC390, it's 20 mil of travel. I don't know what it is for this bike, but this is just way too tight. So we gotta loosen this over here, crack the bolts off and push the sprocket forward a little bit, make sure it's aligned on the other side and get the chain to have a little bit more slack. Then we're gonna go take it out for a ride and see how it does. Okay, that feels a little more normal. Upon further testing, I discovered that the steering head bolt was torqued way too tight this was causing the steering to feel notchy and it wouldn't allow the front of the bike to move freely from side to side, which was causing the weird wandering issues. But I only discovered this after filming for this video, but I fixed it for the video you guys are gonna see tomorrow. The bike now tracks a straight line, but it still doesn't feel great. We're seeing the speedo is crazy off. It just said I was going 60 miles an hour. It's, maybe it's a little more ambitious than it should be because uh, it's clearly not gonna be doing those kinds of speeds. Suspension's pretty rough. I mean, it is a super bike, right? <laughs> I think it's the tires, man. I did fix the wandering issue a little bit. The, the slow speeds feel better now that the brakes aren't dragging at the front, but I think these tires are really compromising this motorcycle. 
I've got them filled up to about 32 PSI front and rear, so it's not a PSI issue. I just double checked that. It just doesn't feel, <laughs> doesn't feel normal. I just wish it, <laughs> it really doesn't behave normally. It's a Chinese bike, bro. Take it easy. <laughs> the brakes don't kill you and the tires don't kill you, the other drivers are going to kill you because um, you're not going in traffic and you're stalling out because the bike's probably running so freaking lean. <laughs> it cannot, it cannot carve a planted straight line. It literally just keeps wandering and trying to find a line. This bike is so unbelievably bad. It can't even get out of its own way. Oh, I would not trust this bike, man. I would absolutely not trust this bike. I'm going to have to get some different rubber on this thing because I, I had a video plan to get this thing out on track and I don't feel comfortable doing that at all. <laughs> this is even, even less than the Royal Enfield. At least the Royal Enfield went in a straight line. This bike refuses to go in a straight line. <laughs> if anyone out there owns this motorcycle, this Boom BD250 or this Venom Motorsports 250, Please hit me up. Let me know if this is a feature or a benefit of this bike because it does not want to go straight at all. Speedo saying 60 miles per hour. Six, guys, 60? I mean, I'm, I'm passing the Civic at like a very... I'm not even passing the Civic. There's no way... Uh, the Speedo says 40 over here. Speed limit's 40. I'm saying 62 miles an hour. Go on. Go on, boom. I also think the rev counter is is not set correctly because I don't think this bike is revving this high. I think it's being, yeah, you see it, it's, <laughs> I think they tuned it so that uh, it's, it's a little, because look at this. No, that is not, that is not 11,000 RPM. I am not doing 70 miles an hour right <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I'm not going 70 on this bike. Got a blue SUV passing me. I'm doing 70 right now, dude. Oh, my goodness. This is really quite funny. <laughs> this is the least confidence-inspiring bike I've ever ridden. It's exciting for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> you literally have to keep... You, you can't just relax and go straight on this thing. It is, it is so compromised in its handling. It's kind of outrageous. Absolutely wide open, it doesn't do anything. Third gear, wide open, nothing. I mean, it's a, basically a scooter, you know? I mean, it's not, it's not trying to be anything other than that. I'm about to go onto a highway intersection and uh, see what kind of juicy power this thing can do. Uh, can I even can I even keep up in highways? Do I have six gears? Let's see. Oh, I got six gears. <laughs> I don't need them, but I got them. <laughs> God, is it is this the dumbest thing I've ever done? I literally went 211 miles per hour with my H2, and I feel more scared doing uh, 65 with this little Chinese bike than I did doing 200 plus with that bike. It says 81 miles per hour on the speedometer. No chance, dude. No chance am I doing 80 right now. Wow, you get it wide open, nothing happens. I mean, look at this. I'm in fourth gear. I'm wide open. That car's getting away from me. It's 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 almost it's almost too little power. I'm not gonna lie. My R3 that I started on would obliterate this thing. <laughs> it had about 70 more cc's and an extra cylinder, granted, but it actually felt like a proper little motorcycle. Whereas this just feels like some absolutely wretched turd. <laughs> First order of business is going to be getting different tires on this machine, 100%. But guys, don't worry, because I did read the owner's manual carefully. Excuse me, the Dwoner's, the Dwoner's manual carefully. I did read that, so we're in good shape. But stick around for tomorrow, guys. I'm going to be doing a full ride and review on this motorcycle. I'm just kind of giving my very first impressions on it. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a dedicated full ride and review of the Chinese 250. And nobody can tell me because I have to say positive things about it. I'll be very honest. I think the reason that that company got reached out to me and said, Oh, mate, make sure you don't say anything negative 
uh, is because there's so many negatives to this bike. It is ridiculous. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Oh man. Oh, I gotta win this race. Oh, oh. Oh, I better keep watching Yammy New. Oh man. Oh. Ah. Oh no. Ah. Oh, I can't see. I can't see. Ah.